What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the entire build process and reveal of my brand new bat suit based on Robert Pattinson's bat suit from the upcoming film, The Batman. So like I said, this is going to be the entire construction process. I am just under a week out from the final photo shoot with my good buddy Tom and Brendan who are gonna be helping with the photo shoot. We're gonna be doing stills and videos so that is going to be at the end of this video in the final reveal. So what I have here is the undersuit slash flight suit from White Sheep Leather. I've just got the top on my mannequin at the moment. Now we're gonna be doing some airbrushing on this guy first off, but also I wanna show you guys the entire raw kit from the very talented Chris Robinson over at GC5FX. Chris has started offering the Batman bat suit in raw form. So there is gonna be clean up, there is going to be trimming. I'm gonna change camera angles in a moment and show you guys and catalog all the pieces that we have right here. So I've already got to work on some pieces, including cleaning up some flashing, doing a lot of trimming, stuff like that, just to get the ball rolling. Cause like I said, we are under a week out and I have to smash this thing out and get it photo and video ready. So here is Chris's raw kit in all its glory. It is absolutely beautiful and he has cast some beautiful looking pieces. So let's start with the cows. So I got a 24 inch cow and a 22 inch cow. Now you're gonna take a look at the 22 and a half inch cowl here and noticed that the uh, bottom piece is missing. So the bottom jaw for the 22 and a half inch cowl is now actually on the 24 inch cowl. Reason being, the top of this cowl doesn't fit my head. Whereas this does, but the chin, so this is the original chin of the 24 inch cowl, uh, it hung too low. So what I did is I cut the chin off the 22 and a half inch cowl and Frankensteined it onto the 24 inch cowl and it fits perfectly. It just cups under my chin perfectly. Whereas this one up here just didn't fit, but it just rest assures that people with a smaller head than mine can have a perfect fitting cowl. So that's why Chris offers a smaller version and the larger version. So the cowl is pretty much sorted. So come over here and we've got the beautiful gauntlets. I've gone ahead and slit the gauntlet up the side here because what we're gonna be doing is a Velcro closure and just tightening them a little bit. They are a little bit loose uh, on my forearm, so just overlapping a bit like that is just gonna make for much more of a snug fit. And in this accessories bag, we have some 3D printed darts that are gonna be mounted on here. And also in this bag are the three fins that go on either side of the gauntlets. Coming down here, we have the beautiful breastplate. So the actual chest emblem slash gun piece? Batarang? I don't know how it's gonna turn out in the film, I hope it's that. Um, this is the beautiful chest piece right here and the chest emblem is cast separate in urethane and then that will be glued down to the lower abs that you see right here. So this will eventually be one piece that will Velcro onto the torso of the flight suit. Over here we have two beautiful shoulder pads slash shoulder bells. Again, Chris is a master caster when it comes to urethane. His work is absolutely brilliant. And attaching to these will be the biceps. So this is gonna sit snug under here. I'm probably gonna have some EVA foam, like an EVA foam tab to glue these two together just so they can still move um, with a shoulder roll and bicep movement, but also still be together like so. Now there are glove accessories to upgrade the gloves. For the time being, I'm just gonna leave these gloves as is. I'm happy with how they are. There are some urethane accessories in here, like the watch and the other panel that will be glued down onto the straps here. And then we have the belt accessories. So I have the Condor Tornado Tactical Drop Holster. Chris has included the basic belt strap. It's like that police woven leather look, as well as the pouch accessories. We've got the baton holder canister holder, and then a resin cast canister here. Now the belt buckle itself has been cast in resin, so there's gonna be some cleanup with that. It is a two-piecer, which also moves. So what I'm gonna do is attach it to the front of the belt, but then slice the belt up the back with a Velcro closure, just to make it easier to put on and off. And we also have this strap here, which mounts onto the upper part of the pecs. And last but not least, Chris has included this beautiful pleather cape. So there's going to be some futzing with this in terms of getting the plates right, and there's just gonna be a lot of Velcro and gluing overall 
on this suit just to make it all work and come together. So now that I've shown you guys the entire array of pieces that have to be clean, painted, mounted, put together, all that jazz, we're gonna do some airbrushing on the undersuit slash flight suit. So this is a size medium. I didn't get any custom measurements done. I just clicked the medium size on their website. I am gonna be putting the bottoms on. So the way it's gonna work is the pants are gonna be overlapping the top of the suit. We're gonna have to go a bit of Harry High pants. And the reason being because the ab section of Chris's kit uh, doesn't go down far enough, which is no drama at all. It's actually very accurate because the, the more I look at Pattinson's suit, it's kind of got a bit of Harry High pants going on with the belt, where, where the belt finishes and the pants start. So we're gonna have the pants overlapping onto here. So it means that the front armor, the torso armor is gonna be Velcroing onto the top as well as the pants. But before any of that, we've got to airbrush this thing. We've got to do some weathering and darken it a bit because it is a nice gray, but it has to be a bit darker and we do have to highlight and weather certain areas. So with that being said, airbrushing time. Okay, so I actually purchased a brand new air compressor and airbrush. This is an Azito brand. It cost me 120 bucks from Bunnings and it actually is a great little kit. So we're gonna be airbrushing the flight suit. We're gonna do the top first and then put the pantaloons on and then do them as well. It's basically just a matter of darkening the gray, just a little bit more and also going in the seam lines, just kind of highlighting them and soiling them a little bit. Even though for the most part, this suit is gonna be covered by armor, it'll just help marry up with the armor once the armor is weathered. So for that, we're just gonna be using black Kiwi shoe polish. Probably water it down just the littlest bit in this cup. And it's one of those things, you do it until you meet that happy medium. So that being said, let's get to it. Okay, overall, pretty happy with how the airbrushing's gone and highlighting these plates. So what I'm gonna do now is grab some talcum powder and just brush it into certain parts of the seams, etc., where there'd be like dust collecting and just general wear and tear. Because from what I've seen on the screen use suit, especially the daytime photos of the stuntman wearing Pattinson's suit, there is quite a bit of dusting going on there. But for the most part, the undersuit is ready to rock and roll. And we're gonna start the mounting and Velcro process on the armor. We're gonna to start to essentially piece everything and place everything together just to make sure it's all gonna line up and then we can start gluing and Velcroing. So we're gonna start with the collar. So this is a two piece collar. We've got the uh, inner part and the outer part and then obviously the cowl will sit inside here. So what I'm gonna do is actually glue these two pieces together because just having them together like this just saves on Velcroing. Um, I've still got to figure out a way. It might be a matter of slitting this up the back or just slipping it on my head and then the cowl and then you tuck the cowl in. So there is a lot of layering going on with this suit. So we're gonna be using the cheap and nasty super glue and just making sure everything lines up and then just glue the outer collar down to the inner collar. Go and just give it a nice press down like so. So keep in mind guys, this video will probably be very sporadic. I may say one thing and then change my mind because again, I'm smashing this thing out. I've got to also allow time for things not to work out. All right, so I've just taken the collar off the mannequin, pop the cowl on just to see how all three pieces look and just line everything up because this collar is gonna Velcro down to the lower neck of the cow. So the big thing about this build is you have to do constant fittings, you know, taking stuff on and off the mannequin and trying things on because having a mannequin of yourself is great, but at the same time, it, it's a solid piece. Whereas, you know, your flesh is soft, you know, things move easier than a mannequin. But just to give you guys a good idea of how this thing looks, it just looks so damn screen accurate. And just swapping out uh, the smaller chin slash neck piece from the smaller cow to the 24 inch cow has just made all the difference. Because with Pattinson's cow, it is quite tucked up under his chin there. And that beautiful chisel drawer of his is sticking out. So overall, I'm very happy with how this is looking so far. So with that being said, we can move forward.
So as you guys saw, I put some Velcro strips in the gauntlets. Obviously, I just want to make them a bit more tight. So we're gonna let those strips properly dry. So as we see here, I've got the bicep armor and the shoulder armor. I just got a little piece of EVA foam and glued the two together. They're making sure to keep them separate. So when it comes time to uh, coloring and weathering and all that, we can at least get up under there. And also this just helps with flexibility, just with like uh, shoulder rolls and stuff like that. But overall, pretty happy. I've got the Velcro tab there that will Velcro under the shoulder of the undersuit and vice versa as you saw with the collar. We're just going to line everything up, make sure everything works okay, looks okay, and then we can move on to mounting the torso piece. Okay, so far so very good. Able to do a comfy shoulder roll. Keep in mind once everything else is on, like the neck piece, the cowl, the, the torso plating, it's going to re restrict movement a little bit more, but other than that, pretty happy so far. All right, so here's where we're at. Now, let's talk about the cape. I've gone ahead and pinned the cape down and glued in the pleats. So from what I see on the suit, from the trailer, stills and all that, the pleats definitely change. There's one shot where Pattinson's all muddy, dirty, and looking up at the sky. And he's got three pleats, which I've tried to replicate here. Um, you know, one, two, three. And then other shots where the cape is literally just bunched up coming out from the chest plate. So I just kind of gone with a neat three pleat look. Now the glue residue here, I'll be covering up uh, with either black shoe polish or black acrylic paint, and then that'll blend back in and go matte, just like the rest of the pleather. So the next step is to add Velcro to the collar and the cape. So the cape will literally lift off like so. It's just gonna make it easier. It's not gonna come apart, um, spread out or anything. Just gluing the pleats in place just makes it for easier application over the collar. So like I said, we're gonna be adding a Velcro under here just on the collar to the cape as well, so it'll Velcro in place. Now this Velcro tab here will attach to the inside of the chest here. So I've got to just add some more Velcro strip on either side and straight in the middle. So because it does have a divot there, we're gonna to have to do it in three pieces. Um, after that, I'm either tinkering with doing the belt and the belt accessories. So I also we'll be gluing down uh, the watch accessory here on the left glove and also this swatch here on the right glove. Now we also have the, uh, the dart launchers here, the grapple launcher that's gonna go under the gauntlets. Then after that, we can start coloring the torso armor, the bicep armor and the shoulder armor. So it's still experimental at this stage. It's probably gonna be a mixture of watered down black acrylic and shoe polish and airbrushing that on. If that doesn't work, we're then gonna be using a black oil color. The only thing is it takes a while to dry, but I'm pretty sure the acrylic and shoe polish mix airbrushed on should work. And then we can kind of remove any excess just to have the gray still bleeding through. And then once it's dry, we can go in and start dry brushing all the uh, silver accents and stuff like that with all the scuffing on the armor. Overall, very happy. It could be one of those things where I could also Velcro the underside of the cape to the suit. I just feel having the anchor points here and on the chest armor is good enough. This sits pretty well, like it doesn't want to pull back or anything and because it has the, the pleats glued in place, it just helps with just cupping the shoulder area, the entire shoulder girdle.
Okay, we've got the 3D printed gauntlet darts all mounted on little barbecue skewers. I just drilled some tiny little holes into the back of them, mounted them, put them on this foam board right here just so they're all upright and easy to spray. So we're gonna start off with a base primer coat of a flat gray primer from Rust-Oleum. Leave that in the sun for about an hour and then we're gonna go in with a white night super chrome and dust this all over them, pretty straightforward. Okay, it's time to start darkening the armor, most notably the chest piece, the shoulder pieces, and the bicep pieces. So I've got my airbrush all ready to go. What I've done is I've created a mixture of shoe polish and watered down black student acrylic. And it's just a matter of misting it over the armor until you reach that happy medium. You don't want it completely black because you still want that gray bleeding through. Now, if you do get some splatters here and there, don't worry, use them to your advantage. Okay, so literally as I was airbrushing the suit parts, the boots from John Ninko have arrived. So let's quickly unbox them and I'll show you guys exactly what's inside. So John has been able to replicate the original uh, riding boot that Pattinson wears in the film and also includes the boot spat. So these have arrived just in the nick of time. Okay, see what we got going on here. So we have the beautiful boot spats, all handmade with actual real leather and they look beautiful. And here is the replicated riding boot in all its glory. So this is great. This is a great pairing right here. Very happy with the look of these so far. So we've got to get to work weathering these bad boys so it can complement the rest of the suit. Get them all nice, muddy and dusty. Alrighty, here's one of the boots all done and dusted. Now something has come to light. I have learned something new with a massive thank you to Mr. Matthew Matangi and Mr. Roberto Gonzalez who have done their homework and found out that two different types of boots were used for the production of the film. So Rob wears a completely different pair of boots compared to the TCX Heroes, which these boots by John Ninko are based off. So upon seeing set photos of stunt performer Rick English doubling as Pattinson on the bike, he's wearing his TCX Heroes. I'm guessing this is personal preference because they are lightweight, extremely comfortable, and extremely flexible. Whilst Rob's Hero boots are Austrian Kaz 03 combat boots, and here are photos of them in all their glory and comparing it to screen grabs and set photos of Rob in the bat suit, it looks like a dead on ringer. So a massive thank you to Matthew and Roberto for doing your homework. We now know that two different types of boots were used. We obviously have the Austrian Kaz 03s for the heroes and the TCX heroes that were used for stunt work, motorbike work. And it's obviously Rick English's preference, I guess. It's whatever he's comfortable with, whatever is gonna make him feel most comfortable on that bike wearing that suit. Eventually I'll get around to finding a pair of Austrian Kaz 03s, but for now I'm happy with these fellas. Apparently the Austrian Kazas go for pretty cheap on eBay and secondhand. The thing is they are quite old school, heavy and clunky, and I totally understand why Rick English went with the TCXs. But a bit of FYI and a bit of an update for you guys. Next up, we are going to swap out the clips here for the same make and model magnetic safety clips on the drop holster that houses the grappling gun. So first things first, we just have to get rid of this little 
dongle right here just by unthreading it. Now the clip actually sits this way. So first and foremost, we have to remove the original clip itself. And we're just gonna grab a Stanley knife and carefully slice the elastic, pop this bad boy on, and then glue it down in place. There we go, and we'll repeat this stage on the lower clip. Okay, we're now moving on to finishing up the gauntlets and dry brushing the rest of the armor with some silver rub and buff. So I've kind of got a head start on this gauntlet to give you guys an example of the effect we're going for. Although this isn't the final look, it's just more about subtlety and just scuffing away at the gauntlet to make it look like there's metal underneath. But before that, we're gonna grab some baby powder. Now what I've found is pouring baby powder out on, the, uh, on your tarp or your, your palette or whatever gives a better effect than actually pouring it onto your piece because you get those spot marks and sometimes they are a bit stubborn to take off. So this just essentially will dull the black sheen of the gauntlets and just make them a bit more dull looking because obviously at the moment these things are just too pristine uh, for my liking in terms of marrying up with the rest of the suit. They even get around into the dark gun there and all that. See, look at that. It's just dulling the sheen already and just getting into that lovely detail. And then when the silver rub and buff has been dry brushed on, it's just gonna make it look even more detailed and battle damaged. Okay, we've just got our silver leaf rub and buff. I'm just gonna put it on the top and just with a dirty old chip brush, I'm gonna get as little as possible on the end and it might mean just a bit of scuffing on your palette or top or whatever just to remove the excess. And then we're just gonna to start to dry brush it over the gauntlets, especially picking up the lovely detail on these bands here. Just go over the dark gun. Oh, there we go, it's picking it. Look at that lovely scuff effect. Just brings out the beautiful detail on Chris's castings. You can get creative with it, have a bit of fun with it, and also go over the fins with it. We're probably gonna have to go in and do a bit more, especially on the tips of the fins. From what I've noticed, there's a bit more silver going on there, but mostly for the straps as well, highlighting all the rib sections of the strapping. And also these spines here in between where the darts are gonna sit. And we're just gonna start on the other gauntlet. Now what I've found with Rub and Buff is because it has a kind of oil additive in it, you wanna let your pieces sit for about a good 24 hours before you start properly handling them. Much like oil color, like artist oils. Uh, just because it gives it time for the oil to kind of evaporate out of the piece and let it dry and whatnot. Um, sometimes even two days, uh, depending on the weather, like it's pretty hot here at the moment, so 24 hours is pretty sufficient enough. But um, again, because it does have an oil additive in it, um, you do definitely want to let it sit for about 24 hours at the very least. All that beautiful detail getting picked up there and just highlighting those spines that are sitting in between the darts. Beautiful, look at that. Just coming up an absolute treat already. Okay, we're just gonna take our cheap and nasty super glue and just put a little dab there and a little dab there. And this is just to secure the darts in place uh, when we go to put our elastic uh, strapping thread on. Nothing over the top, it's just more or less to keep them in place when we add the black elastic strapping through the loops here. And you just wanna hold it in place about a good 20 seconds. And there you go.
Okay, next up, we are gonna do a bit of dry brushing on the belt buckle. There's only a couple of silver accents on the actual buckle, and it's mostly just the middle where the hinge is, and we're just gonna highlight that. Maybe a bit more on the brush there. One thing I've learned about rub and buff, less is more, trust me on that. And just on the outer ring here as well. And just a little bit of light dry brushing everywhere else. But for the most part, as good as gold or silver. <laughs> now here's the resin canister that also goes on the belt. I just sanded this portion here flat just so it's gonna adhere to the belt a lot easier. I'm also gonna back it up with two screws in the back and just drill them in when we go to work on the belt. But same thing, just gonna dry brush on that silver rub and buff and just highlight all that beautiful detail. It's very subtle, but it goes a very long way. Okay, here's the beautiful shoulder armor in all its glory after it's been airbrushed. We've done a bit of dusting as well with some talcum powder and the uh, burnt sienna oil effects just to muddy it up a little bit. So we're gonna be doing some dry brushing on this as well. Repeat the process on the other shoulder and other bicep armor, and then we can move on to dry brushing the bat chest emblem before gluing it into the actual cavity of the chest. So again, same thing, but I wanna take my time a bit more in terms of dry brushing it on because it isn't exactly all over the shoulder armor. It's just more or less on the hard edges and you just wanna lightly kinda of just, there we go, there we go, that looks pretty good. And just kinda of having it scuffing up onto the body of the shoulder armor, that looks pretty good. Again, nothing drastic when it comes to this effect. It's quite subtle on uh, Pattinson's shoulder armor. Beautiful, oh my God, I'm loving this. Very happy with how the coloring has turned out on this. I always get very scared when it comes to painting urethane because urethane is one of the hardest things to paint. Um, but the mixture of shoe polish and black acrylic has stuck really well. I'm really, really impressed. There we go, subtle but works a treat. The last step on the shoulder and bicep armor are the gold tabs on the outer part of the bicep armor. And it's just a matter of grabbing some Lemire old brass paint. This is an acrylic paint with metallic particles in it. And the beauty part is it is flexible and it flexes with the urethane perfectly and it goes on a treat. Now it may require one or two coats. If the first coat's too streaky, We'll just throw another one on, but for the most part, that's easy done. The two piece chest emblem. So I've got the silver rub and buff and I also have some metallic rust from Lemire. And that is just for these tiny little tabs on top of each side of the chest emblem. From what I can see, it's just like a kind of old brass kind of look on the top here. So again, just a matter of dry brushing and also highlighting the little rivets on top here. Once this step is done, we can glue this into the cavity of the chest. So I've got two different size brushes this time around. So I'm gonna be using the smaller brush just for the rivets. One rivet, two rivet. Now there is a serrated edge here. I'm just gonna highlight that like so. I really do hope he uses this in the film. It's like a blade or a batarang. And I really hope it is made out of the gum parts of the gun that killed his parents. That's so metal. Just go up along here, just lightly tapping the edges just so we can highlight them. Okay, one little detail that I've added on are these straps here slash piping. So the bicep armor will sit here and the top of the gauntlet will sit here. And from what I've seen on the suit, it just it's just a little detail right there. And that was just using a polyester strapping that I cut and burned the edges so it wouldn't fray. And this is just a hollow electrical tubing that I actually found in storage under the house. And it just seems to work perfectly. Just glued them in place and like I said, Bicep armor will cover there and gauntlet will cover there. But with that being said, let's move on to the belt. So I've gone ahead and added some Velcro onto the bottom of the torso armor here because we're moving on to the belt. So I've assembled it as best as I could. This is on a hinge, but what I did 
was add some EVA foam and the Velcro piece on top of where the hinge comes out. So it can still flex, but it won't come apart because the way this belt works is it's gonna attach at the back. So this clip here is for the drop holster, all done and dusted. Yeah, let me just up the lighting, perfect. Um, and then we have the batten holder, we've got this pouch here, we've got the canister and this other pouch here. So we're gonna be sanding away just on certain areas here and there, just scuffing, and then also just baby powdering the whole thing just to powder it a bit and get rid of the, the cleanliness and the gloss sheen of the entire belt. So I do have to add some Velcro around the back, but for the most part, the sides there in the middle are pretty damn good. So honestly, once this step is done, our finishing touch is on the cowl. I'm gonna be dremeling in uh, the scuff marks on top. There's my dad. <laughs> and then we're pretty much done. Alrighty, so here's a nice close up of the cow to show you guys after I've gone in and done the scratches with the dremeling. Now, I wanted to dull the sheen of the urethane. Now, if you go in with an enamel matte spray, it's going to leave the urethane tacky, and that is just because of the enamel reacting with the rubber. So what you can do is grab yourself some makeup matte sealer slash primer. So this stuff is great. This is obviously used for cosmetics and stuff like that, but I do use this stuff to dull, say, props I'm working on, action figures, and also urethane. It works an absolute treat. Now, after that was done, I also noticed on some high-res photos of Rob wearing the cowl that there's some soiling going on in amongst the seams. And that was a matter of just grabbing some off yellow oil color and getting as little as possible on your brush and just brushing it on all the seams, stuff like that, and highlighting the temples here. And it just really adds to the effect of this worn, torn cowl. And I love it. Now to show you guys also the Velcro closure, because uh, I didn't um, address at the beginning of the video how I put the cowl on and off. So you can't put this cowl on in one piece. I'm talking about this piece here. The neck piece is completely separate. It does Velcro onto here. The two do Velcro here, but you cannot slide the cowl on as a whole. So what I did is I separated the piece here and just used Velcro. So it literally goes on like a helmet. It's one of the easiest cowls I've ever had to put on. It just makes life a lot more easier. If you do try and put this on in one piece, you do risk snapping it at the back. Trust me. <sighs> Suit up time. It can be cruel, poetic, or blind. But when it's denied, it's your violence you may find. Justice. The answer is justice. We are done and dusted, geeks and geekettes. The Batman, Robert Pattinson 2022 Batsuit is done, for now anyway. I still have some tweaks to do here and there. I'll probably shorten the cape a little bit. I just wanna figure out some things with the shoulder pads because what I've realized, 
I wish I was Robert Pattinson's height. I'm five foot nine, Rob is six foot one, and he has that beautiful jaw as well that fills out the cow. But I did the best with what I was given. I had an absolute ball building this thing. It was four days back to back, but it was so worth smashing this thing out. Just in time for the film's release, and I really can't wait to do the convention scene with this suit, especially in the colder months, because holy shit, you fry in this thing. But once you get into it, like any other bat suit or cosplay, you just get into the character and your movements change, your facial expressions change. It's so much fun. And this is why I do what I do. I love this type of stuff. So guys, I know this was a lengthy video, but I just wanted to include everything in terms of the process to get to this point. So with that being said, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.